It takes the right skills and the right innovation to design and manage meaningful print marketing solutions. Welcome to Podcast from the Printerverse, where we explore all facets of print and marketing that create meaningful communications and business success. Now, here's your host, the intergalactic ambassador to the Printerverse, Deborah Korn. Hey, everybody, Deborah Korn. Welcome to Podcast from the Printerverse. I'm very excited today to be talking to Scott Scheidenhelm, who is the Senior Manager of Product Marketing for Software Solutions at Rico USA. Hey, Scott, thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, Deborah. Glad to, glad to be with you. So we're having conversations with Rico about uh, taking a look at the broad portfolio of your products and services, and without a doubt, the glue that connects it all are, is workflow and workflow solutions. In a, in a 30,000 kind of uh, vantage foot vantage point, why do you think workflow has become so topical in the print industry? Well, if I were to pick at the 30,000 foot level, uh, a few reasons. One is just uh, the, the maturity of the marketplace and changes in the marketplace as a whole. Um, as you see, uh, more competition in the marketplace, uh, new offerings coming to market, um, fewer service providers in the marketplace uh, doing more work, shorter run jobs, larger numbers of jobs uh, in an effort to grow their business, workflow becomes paramount. And so uh, we see our customers and and non-customers, just uh, service providers in the marketplace, very quickly, in some cases, maybe more slowly in others, actually coming to the realization that they have to be better at managing their business. <clears throat> and and at the, the foundational level of managing their business is having the workflow and processes in place uh, to handle that incremental amount of work, um, the fact that those jobs are, are more disparate uh, and provide additional levels of complexity, uh, and potentially without workflow chaos inside of their operations. Uh, so, so ultimately, the question comes back to workflow and how do I make my operations better at handling the business that I find myself um, pursuing, either organically or, or by choice? Uh, and what steps do I need to take to ensure that, um, again, that that business is profitable? This year at, uh, well, in 2017 at Print 17, I held a panel called the Implementation Fear Factor. In speaking with the printers, they all understand that workflow can help them make money, quite frankly. If there's less time, less touches, there's more margin for you to, um, you know, come out with, with pricing for. But it seems that their biggest fear is actually implementing a change. How does Rico partner with printers, and how do you listen to them and develop a process for taking them through this without their shop crashing, which is pretty much their fear? So Rico has, over year, over the years, um, become more and more aware of the fact that, um, as a fact, it's, 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 a, it's a known event and, and you bring it up as, as fear of implementation, uh, it could also be termed a, a failure to launch. Um, customers have a fear of acquiring a solution and maybe not being able to get it implemented successfully or in a timely manner or a combination thereof. Um, over the past two to three years, Rico has made significant investments, not necessarily in our software portfolio, which is, which is quite comprehensive or robust, but investing in our professional services capabilities. And so what we've done is we've put a a large number of resources in the field as a part of our production consulting and workflow automation teams. And those people, uh, by and large, came from outside of RICO, came into RICO with customer experience, uh, actual hands-on operational experience from Operational operations managers, directors of operation, um, shop floor managers, et cetera. And we, we've brought those people to RICO 
and brought their work experience, uh, their product experience, and their knowledge of, of how things actually work inside of our customers' operations. And they come from implant, they come from service providers, uh, and they've got a depth and breadth of knowledge that, that we've been able to leverage over the last two to three years. And how we leverage it is our workflow automation team or our production consulting team, depending upon the, the types of solutions that might be required, will work independently or collaboratively with the customer. And they will, in fact, step into the customer environment and function as the customer. Um, not to displace the customer and say, oh, we got, we've got this and, and you, you can go back to what you need to be doing and all of a sudden you've got a solution that you had no involvement with. What we want to do is stand side by side with the customer during the requirements gathering phase, the what do I want to do? Why do I want to do it? We, we're going to help them qualify what they perceive that future state to be. Is it bringing new offerings to market? Is it, is it and having the infrastructure to be able to do that? Is it to simply be better at the work that they're already doing for their existing customer base? We stand there side by side, and we work with them through the, the, the business development phase. What, what's this going to look like on the back end? What does it need to look like for that customer to deem it successful? Then we look at the requirements gathering from a what's in place today, what's working, what's not working, what could be working a little bit better, and we look, we look at all phases of the infrastructure, whether the software, hardware, operational staff, et cetera. So we, we take a, a very comprehensive approach uh, to looking at the current state of that customer's environment. Then we take that to the customer, and they've been, they've been along for the ride the whole way. And right. we sit down with the customer and say, here's our findings. And we, we get concurrence. Now, you could say that this happens and has been happening for a number of years, and in fact, in the history of, of the marketplace. Um, where we make a critical shift is we then stay in that role of functioning as the customer to ensure that we have resources off-site and on-site who are wholly and completely dedicated to the successful deployment of the solution. And that solution could be services mm -hmm. that are facilitating software, could be hardware, could be a combination thereof, could be application integration uh, that needs to occur. And what we want to do is acknowledge and have the customer acknowledge they don't have, by and large, most customers do not have an excess of staff. They're, they're doing more with less or more with right. the same. Mm -hmm. And so what we don't want to do is put a customer in a position of having to assign someone or some buddies to be dedicated to this project by, by saying we'll bring in people and use them on an as-needed basis but then get them back to their daily activities and we'll keep trucking along. Mm -hmm. And that is where we can eliminate the fear of implementation. And, and even if we, if we can't eliminate it entirely, we'll minimize it to an extent. The Rico Commercial and Industrial Business Printing Group is pleased to be a pioneer in this journey with Print Media Center for podcasts from the Printiverse. From workflow assessment and color management services to a full portfolio of outstanding hardware, software, and finishing solutions to give your business an edge, Rico has what you need at every step of the way. We invite you to learn more at takealookatrico.com. There's never been more to see at takealookatrico.com. You brought up a, a great point, um, which came up during the panel, um, that one of the fears is training someone that they're not sure is going to be there long enough to receive this training. Um, is Does a print shop need a specialized person to manage workflow, or can, with training from a partner like Rico, can anybody do it? The, the answer is it depends. The, you know, to, and I'll break it out into, it depends in two, in two ways. One is to ed, educate or train and enable staff to use a new workflow, meaning 
the, the, the customer's staff doesn't have to be an expert in deploying software. They need to be an expert or at least capable of using the software, using the workflow. And we, we try to draw a very solid line of demarcation for a customer mm -hmm. between, hey, you're only going to install or deploy an MIS, web to print, postal, or other solution maybe once. Don't plow undue resources into getting bogged down in deploying software. Apply those resources and, and dedicate their time to learning how to administer the components that fit into the workflow mm -hmm. and how to use the workflow successfully and, and, to, and to manage it going forward. And, and that's where we see the value of educating. So now the second part of the answer is given the types of tools that are a part of that. So um, when we're talking about a web to print solution, uh, we're talking about MIS, we're talking about um, postal and data quality, we're talking about um, uh, other aspects, you know, whether it's advanced in position, whatever the case might be. There's going to have to be some level of specialization. Um, I don't know that you want to train everybody on a staff to be um, capable with a postal and data quality solution, um, no matter how automated it might be. Uh, so you might have certain people, and, and you may overlap, so that if somebody's, somebody leaves the organization or somebody is away on two weeks of vacation or out on a maternity leave or whatever the case might be, you have that overlap. So we, we do want to have a functional approach to enabling the staff to be successful with the solution that's put in place or solutions that are put in place. Um, but that is really the, the day in, day out use and administration of, not the deployment of. In your experience with helping um, customers and prospects assess their workflow, what are the most common areas you find in need of immediate improvement? So common areas, um, and, and it, it, it varies from customer to the next, but typically the areas that we see uh, room for improvement uh, are, are some of the, the main components. So if you look at um, a web to print or job submission solution or, or what I think in the marketplace today many would like to term e-commerce, um, mm -hmm. in that in the way our customers present themselves to their customers. And having a um, very robust e-commerce presence that minimizes errors that, that demonstrates all the capabilities of our customers' operational capabilities, okay? Um, so everything that they're able to do um, and, and be able to actually market to their customers via that e-commerce presence um, is, is a huge advantage. Um, being able to uh, tailor that presence and, and customize it to the branding that our customers want to present to their customers um, it is, a, is a huge scenario. And take that to one step further. When they get to customers who want to have a dedicated e-commerce presence solely for them, um, then they can customize to their what their customers would like to see. So it, it, the, the approach of, hey, I've got a storefront to, no, I've got a storefront that works for me, works for my customer, presents my brand and my, my capabilities as an organization uh, consistently and effectively or successfully uh, is a huge, huge advantage in the marketplace. Um, you know, it, it's one thing to have somebody be able to go in and submit a job. It's another to have a, a really finely tuned, integrated, and I'll say um, uh, bi-directional uh, Benef mutually beneficial engagement inside of that e-commerce uh, environment. Ready to join the conversation? Follow us at Rico Pro Print on Twitter, Rico USA Production Print on LinkedIn, and Rico USA Production Print on Facebook. There's never been a better time to take a look at Rico. Putting on your software and solutions expert hat, why is web having a web to print system in place so important for the print industry these days? Oh, I, I, I mean, 
I, I think we could probably spend a day talking about the importance and all the various points. But really what it comes down to is um, being able to have a, a, a web to print or e-commerce environment, again, that, that accurately reflects the capabilities of your organization, our customer's organization. So uh, a service provider or, or an implant has the ability to market themselves successfully to their customers, internal or external, uh, and make them aware of new capabilities, new functionality, um, and, and have the best customer experience possible in terms of submitting jobs, um, getting pri you know providing pricing, so on and so forth, and have it, having that be um, as as easy yet as comprehensive as it can be uh, is only going to drive additional business for that. It's going to it's going to protect the business they have and ensure that business and and, and ensure customer satisfaction, uh, but also help drive additional business. And so that 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 presence, if you will, from an e-commerce perspective, is the storefront um, to the world. I know that sounds probably a little bit flippant, um, but it is. It's your it's it's how your our customers customers view them on a day in and day out basis, and that's you know that's their first and foremost perspective of that print service provider. So, in focusing now on your products and services, how is Rico working with your customers to customize these web to print systems for their business? Sure. So, you know, in, on the one hand, you could say that you know anybody could walk in, uh, and if they have knowledge of that web to print software solution, they could go in and, and start configuring and customizing and whatever the case might be. Um, but when you start looking at um, doing HTML customization to that e-commerce storefront and saying, okay, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to have that be 100% customized to meet my customer's branding, to uh, deliver better messaging, so on and so forth, things of that nature. Um, but it, when when we get step back from the product itself and customization and, and deployment of the product, I, I really would say go all the way back to working with the customer and better understanding the offerings that they're bringing to market today, that they offer in the marketplace today, and, and what's coming. What, what What's the next offering or deliverable that's going to be brought to market by our customer? Mm -hmm. And how does that fit into the current e-commerce site or sites, depending upon multiple customers and multiple storefronts? and how do we incorporate those new offerings into those storefronts? And how do we present them and how do we market them? And so on and so forth. So there's there's a lot of capabilities inside of an organization that can be marketed to customers on an ongoing basis as a part of the, the job submission process. So don't make it a don't make it a transaction, make it an experience. Which brings up a great point because Rico has a pretty strong focus on implants. And some might think, well, why does an implant need a web to print system? Um, they're not taking orders necessarily, but they kind of are. So how, how do you um, discuss with implants about the value of implementing a web to print access? Um, first and foremost is is from a viability perspective, any implant wants to have uh, as much or all of the work that's being generated internally stay with the implant. Um, you'd like to not see work going outside. You'd like to ensure that it, it stays within the organization, um, is done at, at you know a price point that's acceptable to the organization, uh, and with a deliverable that is acceptable from a marketing and communications perspective. So. Uh, you know, orders are being received all day, every day in, in an implant. Uh, employees of the organization are the customers of the implant. Again, providing the best possible experience for them to submit those jobs, submit them in a timely manner, accurately, with 
the ability to select the, the finishing options and any other attributes for that job so that they can get it completed and sent to whomever is intending to receive it or is the intended recipient in a timely manner. Uh, beyond that, uh, it gives control over branding. Uh, you can have job reviews, so when jobs come in, you can have a quick review process. Say, does this job meet the, the parameters of the organization from a, a branding and, and communications perspective? Uh, if there are issues with the job as submitted, uh, it can be bounced out of review and back to the requester and say, hey, guys, what, what is it we're trying to accomplish here? What, what, is, what is the end uh, game, if you will, for what's been requested? Uh, so it's, you know, and there's more and more focus on brand control and an awareness of consistency and in messaging inside of the, the corporate implant, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the corporate implant, for it to remain viable, is going to have to grow as the marketplace grows. Mm -hmm. the, the employees inside of an organization are going to see things in the marketplace. Wow, I wish I had something like that. Boy, that's pretty cool. I wish we could do this. And they're going to go look for that. And if it's not available, if it's not apparently and readily apparent that it's available from the implant, they're going to go elsewhere outside of the organization. So, Great. again, that storefront, even in the implant, is going to help encourage work to stay with the implant and leverage the capabilities of the implant. In, in speaking with the implant printers, it's interesting because they tell me that one of their biggest problems is that many people don't realize that there's an implant in their company or their college or their, you know, whatever it might be that they have access to. And guess where they're buying their print? Online. So they're kind of already used to that process. If, um, you know, if, if the internal organization can kind of just set, a, set it up the way that they're already doing it without them, they can easily embrace the new process. Speaking of embracing, uh, take a look at Rico. So um, as far as workflow and systems go, I think with all due respect, in a lot of ways, they all do pretty much the same thing um, in that they help print uh, printers optimize and be as effective as possible in all terms. But in speaking with uh, Rico today, it seems that uh, one of the big differentiation differentiators for you guys is the consulting services and the um, the customer service that happens after. First of all, is that con does that consultation come with a fee? And second of all, when we talk about taking a look at Rico, let's let's focus on uh, the consulting and the customer service, and then we'll sign off. Sure. So. Um Great question. Uh, so Rico Production Consulting um, runs the gamut uh, from um, very mild engagements to very wild engagements, and I, and I use that term kind of loosely. But you know, we can see a, a consulting engagement be a half-day um, virtual engagement where we do everything via WebEx, and it can be very specific to a, a certain type of technology. It could be around web to print. It could be around color management, it could be around business development, uh, it could be a, a, a number of things that can have a, a positive impact in the performance of our customers' day-to-day uh, -day operations. Uh, we also have one to multiple day engagements that are, again, around very clearly defined topics. Uh, and, and again, that can be operational, it can be job submission, it can be business development, it can be, you know, getting the best use out of existing cut sheet or continuous forms hardware, how to market uh, specific deliverables, uh, even in the, in the inkjet space. Um, then beyond those clearly defined, I'll say, a la carte engagements, uh, we have production consulting engagements that are, are more, I'll say, comprehensive mm -hmm. and in be an engagement that might be a day, it might be multiple days, it may be multiple days on site, time off site, compiling the deliverable, and then coming back and meeting with the customer and presenting that deliverable 
uh, which which would illustrate all of the findings um, as discussed previously previously in this conversation, which would be you know engaging the customer, determining current state, uh, defining desired state uh, as the customer sees it today, and making recommendations. And those recommendations again can run across all aspects of their current workflow and processes, points for improvement, points for augmentation, meaning new software, new application integration, um, improvements in operational staff efficiency, et cetera. Um, so the production consulting team um, is very broad based. In terms of for a fee, um, the, the production consulting team um, has predominantly been a four fee engagement team. Uh, I will say from time to time, you'll see very, very brief encounters uh, where we, we come in and have a conversation with the customer around just you know 30,000 foot view. And, and typically that's not a cost to a customer. Uh, but if we are engaging in discovery, requirements gathering, and, and a deliverable is going to be expected on the back end of that by the customer, uh, that's typically a four-cost scenario, and the customers that we engage day in and day out see the value in that billable engagement, and and the, obviously the cost of that engagement scales to the complexity and and the the duration of that uh, project uh, from a consulting engagement, and then ongoing. Um, and let, let's use the theater, theoretical uh, position that you know we've engaged. Successfully, the customer has deployed um, a, a new or improved workflow and, uh, or, or processes, if you will. And what do we do from a customer service perspective? And the reality is that um, not just the Rico Production Consulting Organization, but more importantly, the account team that is directly engaged with that customer on an ongoing basis can pull in at any given moment you know, if there's a if there's a question, concern, issue, et cetera, can pull in additional resources from production consulting, from workflow automation, uh, from our product support teams, et cetera, and come back in and address any um, random issue that might crop up, be it three, six, nine, eighteen, twenty four months down the road. Mm -hmm. So customer service after deployment uh, is crucial. And it's not just crucial from a, oh, I've got a problem. It's six months later, uh, Mr. Customer, what is it, where do we go now? What is it that you want to do now? Or what is it you think you might want to do? And let's right. prove that out from a business development perspective. The RICO Commercial and Industrial Business Printing Group is pleased to be a pioneer in this journey with Print Media Center for podcasts from the Printerverse. RICO drives success in all areas of your operation with a customer-centric approach to business. RICO offers a full range of customized consulting services executed by a team of seasoned print production, workflow, and color management specialists who have decades of proven real-world practical experience. We invite you to learn more at takealookatrico.com. There's never been more to see. Let's take a look at Rico.com. It's a true partnership. Uh, workflow is a partnership within the software and systems that it's trying to interact with, and the company that you choose to work with is equally as important in that partnership, obviously. So it's good to know that there's people like you out there and uh, that Rico is, um, you know, really staking putting a stake here as a workflow partner scott thank you so much for your time workflow is definitely uh topical amongst the printers you've uh shared information openly which is what the printer press is all about and everybody i would encourage you to take a look at rico software and solutions thanks again scott thank you deborah You've been listening to podcasts from the Printerverse. We'd love to hear your feedback on our shows and topics that are of interest for future broadcasts. Please connect with us through printmediacenter.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcasts for alerts on new shows. Until next time, thank you for joining us and listening to podcasts from the Printerverse. Print long and prosper. Print long and prosper.